The gold stocks have underperformed. I've heard Rick talk about this. We've talked about it together. And I think one of the reasons why, besides the gross mismanagement of the opportunity in the last bull market, which is Rick's specialty, you know, my view is it's also once bitten, twice shy. Everybody remembers 2011 and then this horrific five-year bear market. And so the 2020 spike, a lot of investors were worried that it was that was a, a peak and it was just going to be another five-year bear after that. The private sector can always do everything better than the public sector, including inflation. These guys, taken as a whole, the small public companies, can issue phony share certificates faster than the government can print money. And anybody who participates in the TSXV or the ASX needs to understand <clears throat> that uh, taken as a collective, uh, this is a satrapy of private governments that exist to inflate. In today's news recap, gold price remains below $2,650 amid modest USD uptick. Look to USPPI for fresh impetus. Gold price attracts some follow-through buying for the second straight day on Friday and recovers further from a nearly three-week low, around the $2,602 area touched the previous day. From a technical perspective, the overnight goodish rebound from the vicinity of the $2,600 mark and the subsequent move back above the $2,630 static support breakpoint turned resistance favors bullish traders. Moreover, oscillators on the daily chart hold in positive territory and suggest that the path of least resistance for the gold price is to the upside. Hence, some follow through strength towards the $2,657 to $2,658 horizontal barrier, en route to the $2,670 to $2,672 supply zone, looks like a distinct possibility. The momentum could eventually lift the XAU slash USD to an all-time high, around the $2,685 to $2,686 region touched in September. This is closely followed by the $2,700 mark, which if cleared will set the stage for an extension of a well-established multi-month-old uptrend. On the flip side, the Asian session low, around the $2,630 to $2,628 region, now seems to protect the immediate downside, below which the gold price could challenge the $2,600 pivotal support. A convincing break below the latter will be seen as a fresh trigger for bearish traders and pace the way for deeper losses. The XAU slash USD might then extend the corrective decline towards the next relevant support near the $2,560 zone, en route to the $2,535 to $2,530 region, before eventually dropping to the $2,500 psychological mark. Gold price, XAU slash USD. Attract some follow-through buying for the second straight day on Friday and recovers further from a nearly three-week low around the $2,602 area touched the previous day. A surge in the U.S. weekly jobless claims pointed to signs of weakness in the labor market and should allow the Federal Reserve, Fed, to continue cutting interest rates. This leads to a modest decline in the U.S. Treasury bond yields, which, along with a softer risk tone, turn out to be key factors benefiting the non-yielding yellow metal. Meanwhile, the stronger-than-expected U.S. consumer inflation released on Thursday eliminates the possibility of another oversized interest rate cut by the Fed in November. This assists the U.S. dollar USD to stall the overnight retracement slide from its highest level since mid-August and might hold back traders from placing aggressive bullish bets around the gold price. Nevertheless, the XAU slash USD has now reversed a major part of its weekly losses as traders now look to the U.S. Producer Price Index, PPI, for a fresh impetus. Now we'll show you the best clips of the latest interview. But first hit the like button, smash the subscribe button, and turn on notifications so you do not miss out our daily recaps. Let me start with a conspiracy theory first. It may be true. We'll never know. You know, maybe if somebody writes a McNamara type kiss and tell all book a few decades from now, we'll find out in hindsight, that is not investable, right? So it, true or not makes no difference to how I invest today. If it is true, the manipulators are spectacularly unsuccessful 
or we'd still be looking at $250 gold, not $2,600 gold. Uh, that said, to the real gold price question, I've actually been looking at this recently, done some math on it. You know, if you look at it, if you, you know, real in air quotes, you know, what is real? If you use CPI, that's the enemy's number, if you will. So that's the most conservative case you can make, actually. If you adjust for CPI, instead of hitting all-time highs, if you look at the 1980 peak, the 2011 peak, we're actually hitting a series of lower highs. We're nowhere near. Actually, we are near the 2011 peak. We're nowhere near the 1980 peak. That would take over 34, pushing $3,500 gold dollar exchange rate. I don't like to call it a price because gold is money. It's a Forex issue. So it would take almost $3,500 per ounce of gold to top that 1980 high, at least the intraday high. So, so in many ways, the, you know, all the all the promotion and excitement is very misleading, uh, and, but it's clearly understandable. As a speculator, who to quote my master and mentor Rick Rule, you know, forget about what's inevitable. Like, you know, it might be inevitable that fiats go to zero as per the conspiracy theory blowing up. Um, that doesn't make it imminent. And I don't even trust myself to be able to figure out what's imminent. So I look at what's happening now. And what's happening now is a hockey stick in gold. What's happening now is a breakout. And by the way, one reason and where we go with this, you know, gold is one thing, the gold stocks are another. Sorry to hog the microphone here, but this is important. The gold stocks have underperformed. I've heard Rick talk about this. We've talked about it together. And I think one of the reasons why, besides the gross mismanagement of the opportunity in the last bull market, which is Rick's specialty, you know, my view is it's also once bitten, twice shy. Everybody remembers 2011 and then this horrific five-year bear market. And so the 2020 spike, a lot of investors were worried that was that was a, a peak and it was just going to be another five-year bear after that. And they held on to that view and they held on to that view and they didn't want to buy the stocks and they didn't want to buy the stocks. Well, guess what? If, you know, you should have realized after three or four years that it wasn't going down, that that was a message. But now it's gone up instead of down. Like the next big move was not down. That is simply wrong. That view has now been put to rest. The next big move was up. Where it goes next, maybe Rick knows. I don't know. But this is important because it changes, I think, the dynamic for the stocks. And that's important because while the metal may be at nominal all-time highs, the stocks are not. And that's an opportunity. You know, we, uh, we make fun of the government for inflation. The private sector can always do everything better than the public sector, including inflation. These guys, taken as a whole, the small public companies, can issue phony share certificates faster than the government can print money. And anybody who participates in the TSXV or the ASX needs to understand <clears throat> that, uh, taken as a collective, uh, this is a satrapy of private governments that exist to inflate. Uh, to maintain their own standards of living. If the government is the enemy, the market is the enemy too. You need to understand that. Uh, and just in the way that occasionally people amuse themselves by voting, uh, people who voluntarily participate uh, in equities markets like myself need to participate in securities analysis and they need to vote with their own money. I mean, you need to understand that. It's important. Uh, uh, our mutual mentor, Doug Casey, used to describe the value proposition around these gold stocks uh, as looking for something that would have been a billion dollar opportunity had the prospector's mule not died. Uh, I think that's a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful description of the market. So protect yourself against government and protect yourself against management, too. Let's get back to the original question, which Lobo did a masterful job by way of answering. In terms of manipulation, my my question uh, in the period 1982 to 2022 was why would you bother manipulating something that was going down of its own volition? Uh, it doesn't seem to make any sense given the extraordinary strength uh, in the dominant fiat currency, the U.S. dollar, and a period of declining interest rates, an American hegemony, uh, given the strength of the long-term bond, that they would bother manipulating gold or silver because they were falling uh, <laughs> really due to gravity. They were following because there was no fear in financial markets around the maintenance of purchasing power in U.S. dollar denominated uh, deposit products. Why would you manipulate something that was falling? If you have an answer to that, I don't. 
then you need to decide that there is some master class of manipulators uh, who exhibit superior skills and superior intelligence. I'm not aware of the existence of said master class. Again, our mutual mentor, I say ours, Lobos and mine, Doug, uh, Doug Casey, once described central bankers as people who, if they didn't have such phenomenal uh, family contacts and education, would be wearing masks when they entered 7-Elevens. Uh, I, I think that's a very good description of them as a class. So I'm not particularly afraid of manipulation. I do believe that gold will continue to do well in nominal terms. And I think I believe that gold will begin to do well in real terms. Almost nobody me measures it in real terms, uh, I guess because they think that they pay their bills in nominal terms. This is a mistake. Uh, I'm Lobo publishes something called The International Speculator. And in about 20% of my portfolio, I'm a speculator too, but I'm an old, fat, bald, rich guy. So uh, most of my portfolio is involved in investing. And some of my uh, portfolio is involved simply in saving, uh, in maintaining my wealth, ironically, so that I can give it to philanthropy when I die. Uh, and for me, that's where my gold is. Uh, my gold is insurance uh, against the depredation of government on the Commonwealth uh, and against the deterioration of purchasing power, which I experience in U.S. dollar denominated assets. Both Lobo and Rick underscore the importance of gold as a form of wealth preservation. For Lobo, gold isn't just an investment, it's insurance. It's a safeguard against the erosion of purchasing power caused by inflation and government policies that can undermine the value of fiat currencies. My gold is insurance against the depredation of government on the Commonwealth, Lobo explains, referring to the long-term impact of inflation and currency devaluation on savings. For him, holding gold is a way to protect wealth and maintain purchasing power, especially during times of economic uncertainty. Rick echoes this sentiment, adding that while many investors dream of waking up to $9,000 gold and tenfold increases in gold stocks, the reality is much less glamorous. I can entertain those people for a while, but it gets kind of boring being part of an ongoing lie, he quips. For Rick, owning gold bullion is about preserving wealth, not chasing speculative gains. While gold itself serves as a reliable store of value, the world of gold equities presents a different challenge. Both Rick and Lobo caution investors about the risks inherent in gold mining stocks, particularly in the small cap space. Rick notes that many companies in this sector are akin to counterfeiters, issuing phony share certificates faster than governments can print money. Lobo agrees, referencing the advice of their mutual mentor, Doug Casey, who famously described junior mining stocks as looking for something that would have been a billion-dollar opportunity had the prospector's mule not died. The speculative nature of these stocks makes them risky. But for those willing to dive deep into securities analysis, there are opportunities to be found. This is a very boring answer for many of the speculators who are listening to this discussion. What they want to believe is they're going to wake up tomorrow and gold is going to be at 9,000 nominal dollars. Uh, and the gold stocks, of course, fronted by all these counterfeiters, uh, aka management, uh, are going to be up tenfold. You know, I can entertain those people for a while, but it gets kind of boring uh, being part of an ongoing lie. I think that you own bullion if you own bullion intelligently to protect your purchasing power. Occasionally, there's speculative ex uh, excesses. Nobody, including the three people in this call, are smart enough to know when that will occur. And uh, my disparaging remarks about gold equities have to be taken in the context that about 5% of the issuers generate such spectacular performance that they add legitimacy and luster to a sector that as a whole counterfeits more effectively than governments. That's quite an achievement. Uh, when I disparage speculative attitudes in favor of insurance and investing, my wife, Bonnie, a good friend of Lobo's, 
uh, always laughs and she says, that's funny. All of the money that Rick invests carefully, he made speculating wildly. <laughs> so anyway, both Lobo and I are prone to rants. You'll have to do your best to rein us in through the balance of this call.